Hi everyone, let's have a look at creating a colour picker field uh, for, for, for our website. So in, in this particular case, we're building a microsite system for local Gov Drupal. We want to ensure that microsites can have their own colour teams. So if you look at this here, this kind of wine purpley colour is the, the default accent colour we're using at the moment. So that, that carries through for breadcrumbs and the accordion titles, um, you know, and anywhere in, in the, in the uh, team that you want to kind of set an accent colour or a team colour. Um, but we want we want site uh, builders to be able to change those colors and also change fonts and things like that uh, um, on a per site basis, so they can they can have lots of different designs for their websites without coming back to a to a designer or without coming back to a developer to to uh, change things for them. So what we've done is we've created a module um, that we've called localgov underscore microsites underscore color picker fields. It's not the sexiest name in the world, but it kind of describes what it does. But uh, using this code here, I think you could you could use this very simply for any kind of a, a field that would want a color picker. So let's have a look at what we currently have. So what we have at the moment is, if we click on the site design uh, tab here, and we've changed these tabs differently from, we're using group module. So rather than saying edit, we've said, we've called it site design. And we've got a global style section here. And we've got a general text field. So you can put in any value you want inside this text field here. And when you click save at the bottom for the primary color, that will be reflected over here in the uh, site design. So you can see it's kind of a green color now. How that happens is that we add a CSS variable into the body um, tag here. So you can get here's color accent is 49E95F. So that overrides color accent that's coming from variable CSS file from, from the team. And we can we can change any of the kind of main elements on our page by either setting a global style here to change the primary color, the secondary color, our text color for dark, text color light, and things like that. But then we can also override things on a on a per element basis. So the heading here uh, can get its you know all these different things changed and its its, its colors and that. But this 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 field here looks a little bit um well it's not very user friendly. You know you got to know what the hex code is to put in, or you've got to know. You, you, it, it works actually with blue or it works with red, you know, any CSS variable or any any CSS uh, property that, that you want to, you can put in a HSL color and whatever you, you need in, in there. But you kind of got to know what that is in, in advance. So if we install our module, uh, let's have a look at what changes. So we will look for the color picker fields module here and install this. And then when we come back and refresh our site design tab, or global styles, uh, you can see that these fields now have changed a bit. So now we've got a color picker on the side and we've got the input field still here. Uh, and if there's a value, if the color picker changes the border around the input, uh, changes to match that color as well. So if we change from green here to, we'll say a red, you can see how, how, how that changes as, as well. And that happens then uh, for any of the fields that we decide to change. So if we change this one to some sort of a turquoise kind of color. Um, but it also it also works in reverse. If we change the color of the um, text field here to, um, what's this here, C4, I don't know what color this is, but if we change the input on the text field, that will also update the color picker widget here as well. And it's it's a it's it's on change rather than say on input. Maybe it might change that to actually be on on input. So as you <clears throat> so you 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 change something here, and then when you come out of this field here, it updates the color picker, and we can click save at the bottom, and that should make this site look quite garish for us. But there you go. See our red has changed, or our, our accent colors changed to red, and our heading title colors have changed to yellow, and what's our text has changed to yellow. Um, I'm not sure what the other one we set was, but you, you get the idea. That's how that's how, how that works. And I think that kind of that UI is is quite nice for us. So how do how do we how do we do that? How do we set this that when you change the input on the color picker, it changes the border on the on the actual uh, input text uh, text input. So it turns out in Drupal we've got very few. Um, or a few template suggestions for input. We've got input and input dash dash submit dot html dot twig. As far as I know, it's just those two. So what I did was I created um, 
a new hook for inputs. Sorry, no, it's not, not in the team, it's in the module. Um, so if we look at color picker fields dot module, so we use hook team to create a new uh, uh, template suggestion, and we, we we're calling this one here uh, color picker fields, and the template this uses color picker input. So this will give us a template suggestion of color hyphen picker hyphen input dot html dot twig, and then um, we use in hook form alter or hook form form id alter. Uh, we change the the group microsite edit form. And we say that number one, we're going to attach our library that that's comes with this module. That's what's going to give us the JavaScript and the CSS. And then we give a list of the fields that want we want to use color picker with. Now this could be a config page in the team itself or in the in the uh, site itself that you could give a list of the different fields you want to use there and export those as config rather than having to li list them manually here. And that's maybe something we can do uh, as a follow up. And then what we said is that for each of these fields, uh, the the Team suggestion we want to use is a color picker fields, which will allow us then have color picker input that HTML that twig for each of those only, and then we add an extra class called form element uh, around these. This was I can't remember. I think it was something because we needed that element around for our Gin team that we're using it as as our base. Um, after that, then we create a library which is just a general one, give us some CSS and give us some JavaScript, and <clears throat> let's have a look at what we get. So in the CSS, um. Actually, you know, let's have a look at the template we, we, we have first. So the template here is, um, it gives us two inputs. So the, the general input that we, we expect by default, that's the, uh, the the text input. And we give that a class of, uh, a BEM class of text. And then we've got a second input here, which is the type equals color. And that gets a, a BEM class of picker. And we've got a, a, a div then wrapping around them just so we can lay things out, out nicely. Um, uh, let's see what else is there. There's a random here, and this allows them to have set a name as color picker dash dash, then a random ID of between one and a thousand. The reason we want this is because there could be more than one color picker on the page, so we want to make sure that we don't have have clashing um, clashing IDs. So the CSS then it's pretty simple. What we've done is we use display flex, so the items are laid out side by side. We've said that the text field then will have a maximum of We'll have an actual width of 175 pixels. Um, 175 pixels is to make sure then that it doesn't, it's not like this base font size here that comes all the way out as far as here with the color picker sticking off the side of it. And then we've said that the top right and bottom right radius are both zero. That means then that this lines up at the side of this rather, rather than having a, a radius around it like we can see on, on this one here. And then we've got some, uh, the color picker itself, then we said it's 50 pixels wide, and we add in some border radius, eight pixels, border color. Uh, these ones are to mimic, uh, or to match, I suppose, the word mimic, what comes with the gin team, uh, just so, so that the, the layout of it, of it looks, you know, like, like this all fits in well with each other now, so we don't have one kind of a style for this and a different style for over here. After that, then, we're, we're down to the JavaScript. So for the JavaScript, what we said is that, that uh, when you click on the this input here, when you get any value changed over here in the color picker, that the value of the input text, that's this 7BCEC6 uh, updates, and then the border that goes around the uh, the the input it will match the, the same color as whatever the color picker is choosing here. And then we did do the opposite for if you actually change the value of the input here to um, whatever else you, you want that when when you come when, when when this value here changes that the input here also updates as well so there's actually very simple JavaScript to do that let's have a quick look at it we've said here that so we create a variable called color picker fields and this variable gets a collection of all of the items that are have a class of that color picker field then we loop over those, and for each of those, we said that the text, we create a variable for text, which will be the, the text input, and we create a variable for picker, which will be the uh, color input. Uh, we create a small function here then that handles setting the colors. Uh, we've given variable uh, uh, two parameters, item one and item two, and by default, we set those to text and picker. So color will be whatever the value is from item one. Um, the picker or item two value then will be whatever the color is. And then we set the uh, border to be five pixels solid border using that color as well. 
Um, so then we say, if so if text has a value, so wh when you refresh the page or when, when you go to edit the page, if something has already been set inside the, the text input, well then we call this function here using our default text and picker. So uh, the uh, picker will get the same value as what color is and the, sorry, picker will get the same value as what the text is and the board will get the same value as what the text is. Um, if the picker then we say we had an event listener to that, so if the input changes, I had this actually at change so that every time it changes, uh, we, we, we get an update, but you'll see what happens here when we use change instead of input. We can change this as much as we want, but the border doesn't change until we close this. So that's the difference between change and input. So what I'm saying is every time the input changes, every time the, the value inside it changes, automatically update the um, the border as well. So here then we, we, we call the handle set colors um, function and we, we, we set item one equals picker and item two equals text rather than item one equals text and item two equals picker. So it's just swapping swapping the two, two variables. And then uh, if the text changes itself, then again, handle set colors using the default parameters. And that's all we've done. It's as, it's as si simple as that. So I, I think if, if you wanted to use this for your own custom team or your own custom module, you, you, you could very easily um, do so and maybe just change the change the name of the fields that you want to use uh, for, for a color picker.